Mr. Caruso, um, I'm wondering why it is that your uh, your agency is uh, uh, predicting that the price of oil is going to go below fifty-seven dollars a barrel <clears throat> in twenty. Uh, 16, and then even further out, uh, you're predicting that the price of a barrel of oil is going down uh, to $70 a, a barrel by 2030. So on the one hand, uh, America believes that we're in an energy crisis, uh, and I think that all of us really feel that. What your projections are in your agency is by 2016, uh, the price will be pretty much cut in half, and by 2030, it really gets even better because these are constant dollars. How can you explain that? It doesn't make any sense to people that the price of oil is going to be going down. Well, just to start off with a point of clarification, those uh, prices you quoted are the assumptions for the world oil price in our annual energy outlook that was released uh, several months ago, and they are only one of a number of scenarios that we look at. We, but we the, problem, the problem, Mr. The Crusoe, the, the problem with that is that the um, NHTSA, the Department of Transportation, uses those projections to then determine what the cost-benefit analysis is for increasing the fuel economy standards for the vehicles that we have to drive in 2016 and 2020 and 2030. So if you give them that number, then the cost benefit, of course, is much lower in terms of the benefit to America. The higher the prices, if you were projecting four dollars a, a gallon or five dollars a gallon, well, then Nitzer is free to increase by five or six or seven miles per gallon the mm -hmm. efficiency of the vehicles by 20 uh, 2030. So your number is very relevant because it goes right to the question of the pressure which is going to be applied. Um, to the wilderness areas in the United States. The more efficient the vehicles, we put 70% of all oil we consume in vehicles, is the less pressure there is to drill in pristine uh, wilderness areas. So your projection is, I think, way off. I don't think it's even remotely close uh, to where the price of oil is going to be, and it has a profound impact then on all the other decisions which are made. Well, the point is well taken that the NHTSA does use the reference case. We do give them the uh, high price case, which in nominal dollars goes to $180 in uh, one in Would you uh, recommend, Mr. Caruso, that the Department of Transportation use the high case scenario in planning for what the efficiency of the vehicles that Americans drive in 2020 and 2030 should be? Or do you think that they should use $2.26 a gallon in 2016 and two dollars and fifty one cents in twenty thirty as the basis for their planning as to what the efficiency of the vehicles that we drive should be well of course that's obviously the uh, prerogative of NHTSA but I uh, at, we're on the higher price path right now if you were to ask me today what would I use I would use the higher price you would use the higher price but NHTSA doesn't NHTSA has to use your lower price so I would recommend to the Bush administration that they change this formula uh, and that they not use this low uh, cost uh, for, per gallon of gasoline as the basis for the fuel economy standards for the vehicles which we drive. Let me just go down. Yes or no, uh, Mr. Semensky, should, should they use a high cost or should, do you think 2026 20, per gallon in 2016 is a good way for America to plan the efficiency of our vehicles? Well, Mr. Chairman, my experience with forecasting is, is that it hasn't worked out all that well. Um, so. I would suggest. No, as a nation, right. what would you plan for? I would think looking at a range would make a lot of sense. Uh, no, what would you plan for if you were the government? Would you plan for 226 a gallon in current dollars in 2016 and 251 in 2030, or would you plan for four dollars a gallon in terms of what our automotive fleet should average? If, if I were making this as yes. a policy decision, yes. I would plan for the worst. Which okay, is thank you, Miss, Miss Jaffe. What would you plan for? I Okay, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Mr. Manuel, what would you plan for? Thank you. You would plan for? Yeah, probably for the worst. The worst. And, for the uh, best. Ms. Hybert, what would you plan for if you were the Bush administration right now uh, using what the projected price for gasoline for consumers would be in 2016 and 2030? 
But, you know, it's a little more complicated than that because you have to affix the mandates that you're going to impose with technology availability. You have to introduce when is the technology going to be available. I understand that. What would you plan efficient. for? You're the Chamber of Commerce. You're, the cha you're planning. The Chamber the of Commerce is, is I think planning the for what the price for all of its members are going to be in 2016 and 2030, Ms. Hubbard. Would you plan for two dollars and uh, twenty six dollars a gallon for all of your members to uh, or, uh, or, uh, by 2016, two dollars and fifty one cents. Or would you recommend that the government plan that there be a much higher price and therefore adjust what the what the expectations are? from the transportation sector. I will note that the BP statistical uh, outlook, which just came out, noted that they thought 105 was a fair price. That was according to BP. $105 a barrel. Oh, so you're, in, in other words, you're not, but you, so in other words, you don't think that planning for 226 is, makes any sense at all? I think we have to be realistic about the prices going forward, and I don't know how exactly everybody does the different forecasting, but clearly the Well, your original testimony was very frightening. And now I'm asking you, think it makes sense for them to be projecting 26 again? I don't think we need to make our policy decisions based purely on forecasts. We need to make common sense, comprehensive solutions available I agree that are with not you. just so I'm, based I'm on forecasts. You I'm asking you a specific question. We put 70 percent of the oil into gasoline tanks. That's 70 percent of all oil. Do you think that no this forecast is can adequately predict why last Friday the price of oil went up eleven dollars? So forecasts are useful guideposts, but you cannot make concrete policy decisions based solely on forecasts. Uh, well, I, I, if we're not going to be basically learning from what is going on right now in our economy with these high prices, the testimony about India, about China, about all the other pressures and turn to the transportation sector and solve the problem that I'm afraid that the Chamber of Commerce in 2016 and 2030 is going to be ravaged by prices that will be 6 and 7 and $8 a, 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 a gallon. Uh, it's because it's surely not going back down to 226 a gallon in 2016 in current dollars. Okay? That just is not going to happen. And, and I know People you don't want... a violent to, agreement that... Uh, but uh, I know, but I wish that we could get some agreement in terms of how high then the fuel economy standard should go uh, in order to uh, uh, in order to uh, uh, get that result. And by the way, your price projection per barrel of oil is higher than EIA is projecting, uh, $105 a barrel. They have it lower than that in the out years. Okay, so again, this is a big problem that we have in terms of what the Bush administration continues to propose in the long run. Uh, for what we have to do as a society in order to protect ourselves. My time has expired. Let me turn and recognize uh, the gentleman from uh, uh, Arizona, and I will be generous uh, to him in his time.